Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we are going to conduct another tutorial of Picarin F microcontroller and we will be performing serial asynchronous transmission and reception between two, two Picarin F microcontroller. So as you can see in this chart or in this diagram, uh, we have given with two microcontroller, which one is used as transmitter, another is used as receiver, right? So uh, what is going to happen in 8-bit value will be uh, inputted to this transmitter and then this transmitter will send this 8-bit value as serially to receiver at certain rate right that we will decide and uh, receiver will receive at the same rate and then it will display that uh, number which was inputted from uh, inputted to the transmitter that number will be displayed on the output of receiver so uh, let's decide the transmission rate and certain uh, baud rate, right? And write the code. Okay, we have uh, considered 2400 bits per second. That means this transmitter will be transmitting at this rate and receiver will also receive at the same rate, right? And furthermore, we will be using crystal oscillator equal to four megahertz. And we have also done this calculation or this specific case in our theory lecture. So uh, we have done the calculation for SPBRG. I hope you remember uh, how to calculate this formula. If you don't, uh, you can uh, recall using my video lectures on theory class, right? So uh, the value which was evaluated for these two values of 2400 bits per second of baud rate and four megahertz of crystal oscillator, the SPBRG value is 25 in decimal, right? We, this will we will be using in our course, right? Both in transmitter code and in receiver code. So let's write our uh, transmitter code. Okay, now I have written the code for transmitter, right? So let me explain you uh, this code line by line. Uh, set up frisbee, that means uh, we are declaring uh, this port is our input port. So we are using port B as input port. So we are declaring port B as input port, right? So this specific port, which is being input, right, in transmitter is the port B of transmitter microcontroller. Then we are using BCF to C comma transmit TX pin. Uh, TX pin is present in the port C and we are using this pin as output pin. So we are declaring this pin as an output pin, right? So uh, the next few lines are written for the purpose of transmission code, right? So move little to working 20 and 20 hacks is feeded into transmit status and control register. Uh, we have uh, already discussed this thing in theory classes that Whenever you want to uh, send asynchronous serial transmission, then you will use 20 hertz in transmitter, provided that you are working on low baud rate. Uh, so all these things are set up here. So transmission status is equal to uh, 20 hertz, and move little to working 25D. Uh, D25 is put it into the SPBRG register, which is uh, due to this calculation. I hope you can also you also know that right, and then. We are enabling RCSTA comma SPEN serial port enable pin, which is present in RCSTA register or receive status and control register. So we are enabling the serial port communication so that this transmitter can actually transmit uh, serially, right? So these two, uh, these four lines are written just for the configuration of uh, uh, micro uh, transmitter. Then what we are doing, we are actually moving whatever the value coming from port B, we are uh, saving it into working register, move F port B comma W. Then we are performing polling action here. We are continuously monitoring whether the last transmission, if there was any transmission, is it complete or not? So we are checking this flag. If this flag is going to high, that means the last transmission is successful and we can actually transmit the new value. So what we are going to do once it is clear, that means we are we are out of this loop. That means we can successfully trans, we can actually transfer the new value. So what we will do, we will send the value which is stored in the working register. So we are moving that working register into transmitter register. So you know that transmitter register is important register. Whatever the value we want to transmit, we copy that value into transmit register. So now we want to send the value of working register, which is received from the port B. So now, uh, what we are doing again, branch again. So we are actually uh, repeating this complete stuff because our transmitter will be continuously taking the input from port B and it will be 
continuously transmitting. So this is the simplest transmitter code. Uh, now let's write the code for receiver. Okay, now uh, I have written the code for receiver and the receiver code starts clear after D. That is this output code. So receivers for D will be used an output code, right? So we are making this code as output. Then BSF Christie comma RX, right? That means we are using, uh, we are making uh, receive pin, which is present in the port C as input pin, right? So this is just input and output configuration. And then this is stuff is again for receiver configuration. We know that for, if you want to transmit a serial uh, asynchronous reception, right? If you, if, if you want to perform reception of in serial asynchronous mode, we need to send 9.0 in the RCSTA. Right, uh, so that we have used here 25D, which is decided baud rate. Right, uh, it is put in SPBRG register. So these lines are just for the purpose of uh, receiver code. Right, and then we are again performing polling here. We are just uh, checking if there was reception going on. So we need to check whether it eight bits have received or not. So when it eight bits will receive this flag will become one. So we are testing this flag and we are performing continuously polling, right? So we are testing this flag. If this is equal to one, we will be skipping this line which is ABC and we will come back to this line, right? And then this line is basically what we are doing. Whatever the data is received, it is present in RCREG register, right? So what is going to happen? We are copying the RCREG register and putting into the uh, output port, which is port D in the receiver, right? So that is what we ha uh, that that we want to uh, be happening in infinite uh, for the duration of infinite du uh, period, right? Or we want to perform this task for indefinite time interval, right? That is why we are just looping here. Uh, we are again repeating this stuff again and again for receiver purpose. So this code is completely written for uh, receiver, right? So now let's go and implement these codes in MATLAB. Sorry, MPLAB and uh, write down the code in assembly in MPLAB assembler. Okay, this is the same code I have written in slide for you. So I have written this code in MPLAB environments. Now I will just uh, make it and this project is successful. So now our uh, hex file is ready for transmitter. So we will go to Proteus environment and burn this the hex file into that transmitter and add an, another microcontroller for receiver purpose and we will write another code for receiver uh, in MPLAB again. So let's go to uh, Proteus environment. Okay, now we are in Proteus environment and we have to, uh, we, I have already added a pk microcontroller and that is the microcontroller that we are use, will be using as uh, transmitter, right? Uh, so we have used port B uh, as our input port. So we need to attach some switches over here just to uh, show this port is input port, right? Uh, but what if I if I am not using any input port, I can simply transmit uh, any uh, number uh, which can be programmed directly into the microcontroller. So if I change my code, right, just to show you and just to verify how one can check your transmitter is working, uh, independently uh, before we integrate the new microcontroller as a receiver, right? So you can actually check your transmitter if only, right? And you, for that purpose, what you need, you for you for that purpose, you need a device which is called virtual terminal, which is present in here. Uh, in okay, it's not here. Uh, yeah, it is present in uh, probes, right? Right, these are the probes, and uh, there are different instruments available, like we found in oscilloscope here. And there is a terminal which is called virtual terminal. So you need to just uh, place it here, and you can actually verify it. Right. So our code, our transmission pin. Remember, this is written in TX or RCC6. Is it? It is our transmission pin. It will be used at transmission pin, and it will go here in this in its receiver. Right. Okay. Uh, the other thing, because it can use as a transmitter as well, but we are using this virtual terminal as a receiver. We need to verify it. Uh, we need to actually uh, make its properties. Look, it is working on 9600. 
so you can make it 2400 bits per second i made it right and now what i need to do i need to set my crystal oscillator which is already attached okay uh, i need to verify i i need to change my code itself right remember i took uh, i i took uh, some uh, input from port b but i'm not using a port b here because i need to just uh, i just i want to show you how one can verify your transmitter is working or not right so let's go to the mp lab environment again and change the code bit so that it can be burned in this particular microcontroller. Okay, I'm back in my MP lab code. So what I was sending, I was receiving some value from port B in the, over here, right? So I do not want to use, uh, I just do not want to, uh, let's say, okay, make, let's make it first of all comment. So this line will not be used. Uh, let's say we have a value already present in working register. We are not taking we are we are not importing it from port b and that value is ascii a right so a ascii a right so i'm just using ascii a so what is going to happen a is already present is assumed that it is present in work is is a working register and working register will be sent to transmitter register so we will observe this value on hyper terminal in ascii a right so let's see if it is working or not let's first of all let's make this project build it if it is successful, yes, it is successful. So now we have a code and we will implement uh, this This uh, uh, project name is tx slash fa20. So I will copy this hex file. Okay, I'm back in uh, MP lab environment, right? Sorry, I'm back in Proteus environment. I need to go and verify transmission tx fault 20 dot hex hex file, right? And I'm pasting it, okay. So whenever I'm going to turn on this receiver, what is what should be happening? This uh, virtual terminal should be providing A. Uh, okay, I hope you can see that uh, it's it's quite, uh, it's, it's a very, high rate 2400 bits per second that means 2400 bits per second uh, that means at that specific rate uh, letter a is being printed on the virtual terminal screen but you, i hope you can see it it is being printed so it means our transmitter code is working right so it was just to show that uh, just show you just to show you guys that how one can verify your transmitter is working. Furthermore, you can see that it is continuously changing this receiver value. So as values are changing on transmitter, these values are being changing, right? So that was the way, that was one of the way uh, through which you can verify that uh, your transmitter is working independently. Now we will actually come go back to our task, right? First, let's stop this simulation. Okay, and go back to the MP lab environment. Okay, that is our MP lab environment and we will again delete this line because it was just written for the, some purpose. And now I will uh, recover my code. Okay, I will build it again to just to verify if there is any error. There is no error, right? So it's okay now. So I'm back in Proteus environment. Now I will burn it that specific file again because I have changed it a bit, right? So this transmission code and transmission hex file is burned, right? And now we need to uh, connect some switches. So let's connect some switches. Okay, uh, I have actually uh, connected this uh, DIP switches at port B's to provide the input data, right? And I have uh, connected another microcontroller. So this microcontroller will be used as receiver. And what I have to do, I have to connect this transmission pin, right? Of transmitter register, or sorry, transmitter controller into the receive pin of, which is present in uh, OC of receiver, right? So look, this RC6, which is transmission pin, 
it's connected to the rc7 pin of the next register sorry rc okay this is wrong uh, this connection is wrong this transmission pin should be connected to uh, rc7 pin right yes now we are correct so uh, it will be receiving and it will be displaying some data so we need to connect some leds to show data is being uh, displayed on port d or not so let's connect some leds okay now leds are connected to receiver port d right so everything seems to be complete except we need a hex file for receiver that we need to write in mp lab so let's go to mp lab Okay, I'm back in MPLAB environment where I've written the code for receiver. So th this code should be working for uh, receiver. We build it, it's successful. Now let's go back to the Proteus environment where we can actually uh, perform the burning of the code, right? So this is a receiver and we need to uh, take our receiver file, receiver hex file, yes. I've taken it, okay, that's okay. And, I, and remember, you need to choose appropriate crystal oscillator as well. So crystal oscillator in both microcontroller is four megahertz to make sure the correct transmission rate is working, right? So, okay, things are connected successfully. Everything is ready. Let's test our microcontrollers. Okay, so that means port B has receiving some value. Right now, all switches are off. That means uh, there will be no value. So we are receiving zeros. So no LED is glowing. Let's say we turn on this LED on. Okay, uh, I haven't started any simulation. First of all, I have, st I have to start with simulation. So now simulation is working. Uh, now we will switch on this LED and you can see that that third LED is on. That means we are receiving correct information. Let's say if, if I change this most significant switch, yes, it is also coming. So that means whatever the eight bit value we are sending uh, from the transmission side, it is being received uh, correctly and it is being displayed on the port D as well, right? You can check for any value. For example, this is double one and four times zero. So it is double one and four times zero, or it is, uh, one double zero one and triple zero one so it is one double zero one and one i hope you are uh, you have understand how you can uh, perform synchronous for the asynchronous serial transmission between two pk 18 f microcontroller where one is being used as transmitter and one is used as receiver so uh, remember we have also seen if you how you can check your uh, transmitter independently uh, that was one of the wonderful way using virtual terminal uh, by which you can actually verify your transmitter is working or not right so i hope you have learned uh, this uh, serial asynchronous transmission and reception using pkdnf microcontroller in proteus environment uh, if you have any question regarding this simulation you can post your comments and queries in comment section thank you so much for listening